Hi there folks and welcome back to the tiniest work shed in Scotland. Just want to say thanks for everyone that's watched these last few videos. I'm really enjoying doing them. Let's me spend a bit more time in the shed and gives me a bit of pride in what I'm doing. I really appreciate that and I hope you'll subscribe and all that stuff that YouTube people have to say. I call this the tiniest work shed and it's not uh, much of an exaggeration, it is very, very small in here. It's about 3.6 by 1.2 metres, which is about 12 feet by 4 feet. If you're watching this from the United States or from the distant past, sorry. So whenever I pan the camera around in here, you're pretty much seeing everything that there is to see. But there are still some bits that I maybe haven't dwelled on or haven't pointed out explicitly some sort of secret or hidden features and whilst that's totally just a clickbaity exaggeration there are still some interesting bits so let's take a wee look. The first cool hidden feature is actually the space on the workbench so let's take a wee look. Because I set up and levelled this chest of drawers I've actually got quite a large surface here. This is just a piece I'm working on. The bench continues right to the edge. This is uh, 220 uh, centimetres, uh, which is a wee bit over seven feet. This is about 60 centimetres. Uh, and I can obviously have pretty long work pieces there, but depth can definitely be an issue. Now, I painted this section white just to bounce the light a bit better, make it a bit brighter, but you might notice that the framing is a little bit different here. It's got these diagonal bracers, and that's because it's actually a door. If I unlock this and take the key out, I can open that. And I took the lock mechanism out from the outside, so you can't open it from the outside. There is a little turnbuckle outside that retains it. But this is also held shut with magnets, but now that I've opened that key, this opens completely out. Like that. And the wind will probably grab it. This one opens as well. It's got a retaining catch, as you probably saw. And this gives me so much more space. I don't even know how far that is, but it's a pretty long way. So I can actually, whether or not I open the second one, I can work with much longer pieces in that orientation. And very handily, my miter saw, if I set it here, the rear extension can go out there and it allows me to use the full slide because it is a sliding uh, combination miter saw. Super useful. Let's talk next about safety and security. This is an incredibly quiet, safe area. I've never heard of anyone being broken into or anything, but tools are expensive and I've spent a lot of time getting things just the way I want them. So I've added a few features for security and also just for my own safety. Obviously lighting, I've got a good work lamp up here. Also got these little lights here and you'll have seen them before. What you might not have noticed is that there are these little USB rechargeable, magnetically mounted sensor lights. So if there was no power at all, or I didn't turn on any of the main supplied lights, I would always have lights to see by when coming in here. Because you don't want to be stumbling about in the dark in a place that's got pieces of wood and cramped confines and power tools and sharp saws and all this kind of thing. Uh, I also have, if I don't fancy the stark white vibe, I can switch the shed into disco mode. Yeah, that's pretty good. And finally, security wise, even though it is incredibly safe and I doubt there would ever be a problem, there are multiple cameras monitoring uh, this at all times. 
When you're coming towards the shed from the front, you'll pass a driveway camera and an upper mounted camera that monitors the property. And if you're in here, you might see there's a camera up there. Hello camera. These are all hooked through Apple HomeKit. They're on uh, face recognition, person detection, even animal detection. Uh, they are live streamable. They send notifications and video clips all using HomeKit Secure Video. It's a pretty fancy sort of system. This is also a, a safety feature for me because uh, my wife can keep an eye on what I'm doing in the work shed and even intercom through if she wants to speak to me. So that's pretty nice. Next up, we have some less obvious tools. Coffee doesn't count, but I'm going to take a sip. I've got three uh, that I could think of as sort of hidden away secret tools. The first one is, even though it's not a very tall uh, ceiling, I'm not a very tall person and if I need to do any work on the roof externally I need a wee bit of extra height so behind this very useful work mate there's a little hop up this is a step that just folds flat and pops out like that and you get them in various heights and everything and it's really light easy to transport when you lift the handle it just folds itself up and slides back down in there really useful thing to have now we have proper dust extraction and the vac and blower and everything, but of course, sometimes you also just need to sweep up. So, hidden in here, we've got a compact little dust pan. Get the brush, this flips down, it curves and goes straight to the ground for easy sweeping. It's got a comb on it, so you can get all the stuff out of the bristles of the brush, and it folds nice and flat. And if you decide that you want to have either one of these handles longer, it comes with a bunch of extra sections, which I've definitely got here somewhere. There they are. So that I can lengthen them as I want. That's all pretty good. And the final one is very, very hidden. You probably will not have noticed it at all when I move it about periodically. I'm thinking of putting a backing just a lip here because occasionally small parts might roll off. Similarly for the gap here, there's a fair old gap there and back here. But what I do in the interim is on the odd occasion that I lose a screw or whatever, I use this. This is a metal tool rack, so this is attached magnetically. It's just a bit of dowel that I cut from my stock it's got a little ring magnet screwed onto the end of it so this is my magnetic grabber for reaching in under the workbench that will go right to the back I can easily grab any screws that have fallen down I don't know how much money I've spent on tools but this is a couple of quid worth of material if that and it's one of the most useful things I own Next up, very, very quick one, one device you might have seen, one device you probably haven't seen. I do have this rotatable uh, phone clip thing and charging if I want to be plugged in. This is what I use to film the sort of intro bits. I'm just, it just sort of faces that way and I've got the mirror behind me. Uh, so I can play music on that, but if I want a bit more, you know, space filling, there is a Bluetooth Sonos device down right here i can connect to that play the music the combination of the hard surfaces having a bit of air above it uh, and the gaps actually creates a really good sound and it's completely out of the way so there is a, a music music system in here and it's an alexa gadget as well which is always handy for the odd quick calculation or checking the weather or something like that that one's hidden the one you'll probably have glimpsed is this which is a heater. I made this little bracket thing just to hold it. Um, it's on the Wi-Fi and I can check what temperature it is in the work shed from wherever else I am. I can turn this thing on remotely and it's uh, thermostatically controlled as well. So it will cycle up to the temperature you set, turn itself off, wait till it drops by a, enough of a margin, breathe that temperature, go back up again and so on. And I've positioned it there just to sort of 
hit the workbench area about mid chest height and it's not on too high a fan setting it's a really really useful thing being in scotland there's a week or maybe two in a year where it's too hot in here but most other times it's too cold so that is super useful next up it is the door there's some aspects of this door that are less than obvious i put on this lovely handle this is a third party aftermarket thing much happier grabbing and pulling that shed doors have got a tendency to settle um to hang down put a little retaining block there cut this insulation so that it sits on there so it won't actually drop against its hinges one of the big issues get here is wind the wind shoots down this way and it'll often grab the door slam it back it actually destroyed the previous door sort of like broke it like that I had to take it all off these are pieces of that door the rest that i made into a potting bench for my wife it's down in her greenhouse right now so retention is super important to not let the uh, wind just grab the door and take it away because it's the the dangerous when the door would fold back on itself hit against the side of the shed which of course only goes back to here and thus it would sort of split the door at that point so this big heavy duty retaining arm has been absolutely fantastic best thing you can do of course is close the door but sometimes you want a bit of light and a bit of air so as you saw a second ago i've got a little retaining what do you call these a cabin hook i think that stops it opening or closing any further but anyone coming from outside can just obviously whack that up and come in that's my the dog see me and lets my son come and peek in and see daddy if i'm doing something dangerous that he can't be in here for but he still wants to see me that serves that purpose so i can keep it open a bit and stop it opening too far I mentioned wind but of course this is scotland so the biggest problem by far is the damned rain rains all the time and sometimes i do want to have the door lying open for ventilation for light whatever it might be but the rain here we, we say it's horizontal you know there's often so much wind associated that it just blasts right in so i put a rain cover up this is just a piece of transparent tarp it's sewn in and it's got eyelets along the edge the top three i've got pinned in I've got these velcro straps i think i got these from a, a mattress or something i don't know and there are eyelets all the way down which you can see just there and since they're metal of course i've put magnets those disc magnets um similar slightly larger to the one on my magnetic grabber stick and they're down the framing like that so if i want to put this out just pull the three straps the straps are pinned up so they don't go away this rolls down and it just clicks onto the magnets via the eyelets obviously they're positioned for that purpose and it just stays right there lets in all the light wee bit of air around the edges but keeps the rain outside and away from lumber and tools and stuff very glad that i did that and the final wee useful thing is i've got this uh, writing board what do you call it dry erase i think's the thing we say uh, and it's not just a writing board it's a magnetic board of course as you can see and what i use that mostly for i occasionally sketch down uh, dimensions or a diagram but quite often i actually just grab the instructions for something a new tool or whatever it is or something that i need to read and refer to and just peg it up there with magnets for example today making this video i've had my sort of checklist for what i wanted to talk about up there obscured by that instructions for whatever it is so that you wouldn't get spoilers with the reflection in the mirror and that means I've now spoken about absolutely everything, so I think we are done. Thanks for watching this latest video. When you're in a tiny wee workspace like this, pretty much nothing is optimal. 
uh, you know, there are bashes in this ceiling in this insulation material where I've been turning a workpiece and just whacked it off the ceiling, little dings in the walls. It happens. This is Edinburgh. It's a, it's an ancient city. It's a European capital city. It has evolved and grown from uh, times long before motor vehicles and all that kind of thing. It's expensive to live. Your space is usually expensive. So you pretty much just have to make do and fit in and find a way to do stuff. Um, the challenge of figuring out where to put things so that I can access them and use them and that their position or storage doesn't become a barrier to using them and take the joy out of doing this uh, that is the interesting challenge for me if anything I'd, I'd like it more than the woodworking and I like buying new tools even more than either of those things uh, I've got lots of ideas for how to improve this place and get some more of my tools in here. I do of course have a tool cupboard in the house itself uh, with some of my smaller tools but I've got a plan for how I can get them out here and incorporate them. I'll have a video on that if that plan comes to fruition. Hope you will uh, subscribe and tune in to the next one. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this. See you next time.